Kere, visitor. You are about to embark on a journey of discovery through the rich and fascinating history of classical Greece. Welcome, traveler, to the ruins of Mykine. These are the ruins of Mykine, center of the old Mykinian civilization. It was home to great warriors and heroes. In many ways, places like Athens and Sparta stand on the shoulders of its accomplishments. This tour will take you through its ruins and introduce you to its most important monuments, revealing its history in the process. I hope you enjoy yourself. I'll be waiting for you at the end of your visit. The Mycenaean civilization flourished in the Late Bronze Age between 1600 and 1200 BCE. During this period, it was mainly located in the Peloponnese and central Greece. Mycenaeans were known for exploring distant lands. Notably, they battled the Hittite allied city of Walusa in a conflict that was believed to be the inspiration for Homer's Trojan War. But the Mycenaean people didn't only travel to fight. They learned much from their neighbors, the Minoans of Crete, such as how to write syllabic script on clay tablets. Such tablets provide evidence that Mycenaeans spoke an early form of Greek. They also tell of how great Mycenaean kings ruled over their warriors from opulent palaces in places like Mycenae, Thebes, and Knossos. The entrance to Agamemnon's citadel, or the Lion Gate, is one of the most iconic monuments in Mycenae. It is impressive for both its height and for the intimidating rendering on its relief, which depicts two lions standing on either side of a column. Unfortunately, the lion's heads, which were presumably made of a precious metal or higher quality stone, have been lost to time. The gate was most likely meant to greet a triumphant king returning home from successful military campaigns and to awe foreign visitors. When these shafts were discovered by archaeologist Heinrich Schliemann in 1876, he believed the six gold-filled graves to be connected with the family of the great king Agamemnon, even going so far as to proclaim a gold mask he found within to be the death mask of Agamemnon. However, this was refuted by later excavations, which showed that the 19 bodies buried in the shafts dated back to a few hundred years before Agamemnon was even born. In fact, at the time of the body's burial, the Lion Gate and the Citadel Walls had not even been built yet. It's estimated that the people in the graves were members of the first Mycenaean dynasty. The graves later became a place of worship for Mycenaean kings who raised walls to protect them. These walls helped preserve several incredible artifacts, including women's jewelry, death masks, and masterfully crafted weapons. By 1250 BCE, Mycenae was at the height of its power, and its living quarters and workshops were numerous. Houses were built everywhere, from the top of the palace's hill near the king's residence, to the slopes and terraces within the walls, to the nearby hills outside the citadel. At one point, the citadel's walls even had to be enlarged to make room for more quarters. The people who lived inside the citadel were those with high status in either the military, religious, or administrative sectors of the kingdom. This is reflected by the ceramic and metal vessels inside the houses, as well as their painted plastered walls. A traveler seeking an audience with the king would have first ascended a steep ramp from the Lion Gate to the Citadel's summit. Here, they would have walked into the palatial complex through a grand entrance called the Propylon. Once inside, their gaze would immediately be drawn to the palace's main hall, a monumental area known as the Megaron. The vividly decorated Megaron, which glittered with precious objects and colorful frescoes in its heyday, was where the king would have received the traveler. If the king was feeling generous, he would have shared with the visitor the palace's most marvelous feature, its commanding and majestic view, which stretched from the plain of Argolis to the gleaming Aegean Sea. It was in this palace where a legendary Mycenaean king like Agamemnon would have held court. According to Homer and other poets, Agamemnon led the Greeks in the sack of Troy. Stories say that he was a fearsome warrior on par with Achilles, but also 
an overly ambitious and arrogant ruler. He sacrificed his own daughter, Ephigenia, to convince Artemis to grant his ship's passage to Troy. After conquering the city, he returned to Mycenae with mounds of riches and a Trojan named Cassandra as his concubine. Agamemnon's wife, Clytemnestra, was not pleased with her husband's sacrifice of their daughter. She plotted to murder her husband out of anger. The plot was successful, and, depending on the version of the story, Agamemnon was either murdered in his bath by Clytemnestra or killed by his cousin Aegisthus during a banquet. You've completed the tour. I trust it was an eye-opening experience. Though it did not last, Mekine was a sort of precursor to what would eventually become the Greek civilization we know today. It's important we remember them, if only to avoid repeating their mistakes. Now, what else would you like to do? Then let's begin. First, I have quite a simple question. Which ancient city may have been the inspiration for Homer's depiction of Troy? Yes, the Mekinians' conflict with the city of Wilusa allegedly inspired Homer's Trojan War. Now, for the second question. Agamemnon sacrificed his daughter Iphigenia to convince which god to allow him to proceed to Troy. Yes, Agamemnon sacrificed Iphigenia to reconcile with Artemis, who then allowed his ships to pass to Troy. Now, one last question. What was the name of Agamemnon's Trojan concubine? Correct. Following the sack of Troy, Agamemnon sailed home with the Trojan prophetess named Cassandra. You've studied the ruins well, traveler. I appreciate your desire for more knowledge. Let us continue.